hey, 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 <laughs> hey, Mr. Wara here again. Oh, good. What's that? Oh, oh, why didn't I say hola? Oh, I didn't say that. Hola. <laughs> Welcome, my friends. Here we are again doing mathematics. Yes. And we are looking at lesson 5.7. Woohoo. Yes, and our topic for today is going to be right zeros in the dividend. Central question, our purpose, our learning target. When do you write a zero in the dividend to find a quotient? I think that's great. And of course, they have our connect. When decimals are divided, the dividend may not have enough digits for you to complete the division. In these cases, you can write zeros to the right of the last digit. And this is going to be really easy, you guys. I'm telling you, you'll see. And of course, now it's time to unlock the problem. It states the equivalent fraction so that writing zeros to the right of a decimal does not change the value. Here's our example. It says 90 and 8 tenths is equal to 90. And then if you put 8 times 10 over 10 times 10 is equal to what have we just done? We basically just multiplied the 8 and the 10 by 10. We haven't changed anything, which equals 90 with 80 over 100 because we had the 8 tenths there and then we multiply the numerator and the denominator both by 10 and that gives us 90 and 80 hundredths which is equal to 90 and 80 hundredths or 90.80. So by multiplying by both the numerator and the denominator of that represented fraction there, you see that 8 tenths, it didn't change the value. Very interesting. And we may have even talked about in a previous video how that is considered equivalent decimal by adding a zero on the end. You don't change the value. Think of it this way. If you had a model of uh, not a 10 by 10 grid, but let's say you just had like a 10 by 1 grid. You just had a grid that showed tenths going across, and then you had your 10 by 10 grid. If you were to shade eight of those in on the tenths, that would be the same as if you shaded 80 hundredths in on that other grid. So just an example how that's true. Now to the problem. It says during a fundraising event, Adrian rode his bicycle 45 and 8 tenths miles in four hours. Again, a lot of times we just say 45.8 miles, but I'm saying the place value so you get used to hearing it. Find his speed in miles per hour by dividing the distance by the time. Okay, that's a famous formula, my friends. So let's take a look at Adrian. Oh, yes, he looks like he's cruising. He's got his helmet. Safety first. I like it. Yeah, he looks like he's cruising. All right, let's take a look at the problem. It says divide 45 and 8 tenths, which was the distance that we said that we were going to divide by the time, which is four hours. Now, we could do our estimate first. And again, that estimate is really handy in math because it kind of gives us a about number, close to number, so that when we solve, we can always refer back to it. Well, they estimated the 45 and 8 tenths to 44 because that works really well and is compatible with our divisor, which is 4. And of course, that's going to be 11. Okay, let's look at step 1. Step 1 states, write the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. Okay, that really that thing I like to do first. Yes, you have to be really careful, Mr. Wara. Please don't divide this time in that last video. Yeah, you went a little bit too far. <laughs> okay, so that's all I'm doing, nothing more. Step two, divide the tens, ones, and tenths. Okay, we've done some of that, so let's go ahead and do that. Four is gonna go into 45. Well, we just made an estimate um, of 11 going into, four times 11 is 44, but first we're just gonna look at the four into the four. I'm sorry, I'm looking way ahead here. So four, we're going to four one time, and of course four times one is four, so I put my four there. I end up with zero. Now I'm gonna bring down my five. We have five, so four, we're going to five one time, okay, which again is four. Then we subtract, we get one. And you bring down that eight all the way. Woo! That comes down. Now four is gonna go into 18. Oh, I forgot to put my decimal back up here. <gasps> Got you, Mr. War. We caught you. Okay, so 18, and then 4 goes in there. It looks like about, well, I want to say 5, but no, 4 times, because 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, and then 18 minus 16 is just 2. Kind of interesting. Oh, did I go ahead? And the tenths. No, I did that okay. <laughs> All right, thought I went too far <laughs> again. Step 3, write a 0 on the dividend and continue dividing. Uh-huh, so let me copy my numbers here. At 11 and 4 tenths here. Ah, I see. Do you see that? Yes, they added. Woo! 
a zero right there and brought it down. So here was my two. So now I'm just going to put a zero on the end. That's really cool. I like their blue arrow too. Very straight. Now I can see how many times a four going to 25 times. Four times five is 20. So I put my 20 and I end up with a remainder of zero. That's right. Nothing left over. So, so Adrian's speed was, that's right, his speed was 11 and 45 hundredths miles per hour. I don't know, is that fast on a bicycle? Probably not too bad. Okay, so let's continue on. Again, we have a connect. When you divide whole numbers, you can show the amount that is left over by writing a remainder or a fraction. By writing zeros in the dividend, you can also show that amount as a decimal. Okay, that's a key point right there. You know, I'm going to do, that seems so important to me. I'm going to do a, that's right, bubble. That's right, bubble, 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 bubble. Okay, there we go. That's how important that is. <laughs> Anyways, example, write zeros in the dividend. Divide 372 divided by 15. Now divide until you have an amount less than the divisor left over. Insert a decimal point and a zero at the end of the dividend. Place a decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. Continue dividing. Okay, these are all the steps. I'm going to look back to my left as I'm doing them. Okay, so it looks like they started the problem for us. They said that 15. Ooh, purple dot. Ah, now it looks like a blotch. There, I took care of that guy. Okay, so 15 is going to go into 37 two times because 15 double is 30. There's my 30. Okay, two times 15 times. And then I subtracted. Seven minus zero is seven. Good. I'm just checking their work, you know. And then the two comes down. And now we have 72. And 15 times four is 60. Okay, looks good. And that's going to leave a remainder of 12. And of course, 12 is smaller than the divisor. Therefore, we took out as many as we possibly could, or we create as many multiples of 15, if you will. Then we're going to bring our zero down. There we go. 15 goes into 120. I think how I would solve this one is just to kind of think of, well, 15 times 4 is 60. Well, that's like doubling it again, so that seems like that's going to be 8. And then we get 120. I think so, just so you know. I could have multiplied, but I'm just doing some mental math. 8, and there you have your 120. 120. 372 divided by 15 is equal to 24 and 8 tenths. Cool. We're just getting really full on division now. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now we look at the next problem. This is when we get into that kind of drawing conclusions, but we're going to look at a mathematical practice six. So, mathematical practice six here states attend to precision. Okay, when we think of precision, some accuracy. I can use precision when solving problems and communicating my ideas. That's right. Problem solving, calculating accurately, efficiently. My answer matches what the problem asked me to do. If I had to estimate, I did. Or if I had to find an exact answer. Good, good example of precision. And of course, we have communication that's allowed with that. Of course, we have communication, communicating, speaking, reading, writing, and listening mathematically, using symbols, vocabulary, that kind of thing. Thank you, Mathematical Practice 6. Now it's time for you to go bye-bye. Now we have Sarah has 78 ounces of rice. She puts an equal amount of rice in, uh, yeah, in each of 12 bags. Oops, they forgot their space. Yes, I challenge. Anyway, what amount of rice does she put in each bag? Okay. Explain how you would write the answer using a decimal. Okay, it's a great question. Well, I think I would. I think I want to solve this problem, I suppose, first. Yeah, since I have a total of 78 ounces, let's do that. Because it's actually a problem we need to solve. So here, I see, so there's 70 ounces of rice. She puts an equal amount in 12 bags. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 12. What amount of rice does she put in each bag? That's what that's going to do for us. So right now, we don't have any decimals in either the dividend or the divisor. So I can go ahead and start dividing. Well, 12, I like this one because 12 times 6 is 72. And that looks like that's going to work out really nice. It is until we subtract. Then we end up with a remainder of 6. 
we need to know how much rice he puts in each bag. They want some accuracy here. They're not going to say, okay, there's going to be six bags, but there's going to be six ounces left over. No, 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 no. That's not what they're asking here. So I need to put in a decimal point. And I can do that. Yes, it's it's legal. You can do it. Okay, and now I can go ahead and remember, I can put on as many zeros as I want. Okay, I might not need them all. I might not need to bring them all down, but I have them there. You know, I'm getting too high up on my screen. Let me move that. There we go. Much better. And now I bring down my zero. There you go. And then 12, 60. Yeah, isn't 12 times 5, 60? I think so. Because you carry the 1, 5, 60. Yeah, and that ends it. Okay, that turns to zero. So I didn't need those other zeros, which is fine. Okay, so we end up with 6 and 5 tenths ounces. So let me go ahead and move this again. Shrinky time. Shrinky. Whee. Oh, wee. Oh, okay, Mr. Wara, Mr. Wara, uh, <laughs> um, it's time that you get a little bit more serious. Okay, I'll put it way over here in the side. Now, it does explain how you'd write your answer using a decimal. So now that I've done it, at least I can first put my answer, which we came up with six and five tenths. And of course, this is ounces. You can spell that out. Uh, what is that? O-U-N-C-E-S. And then explain how we would write it. Well, that amount that was left over was six. So what I did was that I put in a decimal point and a zero after the eight in that uh, in the dividend, and then I divided sixty by twelve. Okay, twelve went into sixty-five times. That's what I did. So the amount left over is six. So I so I would write a decimal point and a zero after the eight. In the dividend, the number under that bracket there, the number that we're dividing is the dividend. And then, of course, divide 60 by 12. Awesome! Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. Oh, I just love doing math. Da -da. Da -da. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Okay, Mr. Warrior, you're having way too much fun with this. I know! Okay, now let's just try this. Okay, this is a good opportunity for you guys to put the video on pause that's right pause i'm not I'm talking about little, little pause on your kitten or your dog i'm talking about pause you know take a little breather little break okay and then solve those on your own and then of course rejoin me in the video and see how you did okay it looks like there's a lot of support here so it doesn't look like this would be too hard so i think you should try it okay so there's no way for me to know but i think you should hit pause okay try this divide right at zero at the end of the dividend as needed. Might not need it. We shall see. They have six hundredths, okay, in the divisor, okay? And so they move that decimal point, though it doesn't look super accurate. I think it should be a little up there. Yeah, I know. Mr. War, you're getting a little too exact. Okay, sorry. So I multiplied that by 100, and then, of course, multiplying that by 100 gives me 123. Okay, just checking their work, you know? They may have made a mistake. Now, 6 will go into 12 two times. I see why they did that. 12, remainder 0. Good. And then I see they put 6 will then not go into 3. That's a problem. So, when you bring down a, a digit, this is a really important step here. They haven't actually talked about this, but this is where many students make mistakes. So, if I had a little, my little bell like I have in my classroom, I'd go ding, 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 right? Because this is something important, so I'll just go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> anyway. When you begin dividing your number and you get a remainder of zero or any number, and it just so happens that when you bring down the next digit, like in the case with three, when six can't go into that three, we can't just keep dropping down digits. We have to acknowledge the fact that six can't go into that three, and we must write that zero up the top. That's why you see that zero right at the top. Do you see the arrow pointing at it? Yeah. And so then I bring down my zero, giving me 30. Six goes into 30 so nicely, and that's going to be five times because that's 30. Yay. Remainder, zero down here. So we have 20 and five tenths. All right. That's easy. And that actually has to check our work, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway because we can take the quotient now, multiply it by the divisor, which is six, okay? which is 30, carry the one three, that's zero, and then add three is three, and then that is 12, okay? And now I have one decimal point here in the device. In order to remove that, I have to multiply by 10. I like doing the inverse operation, so I'm gonna divide by 10, and that will give me the 123. Yes, I like it. 
Now, let's come over here, divide 10, divided by 8 tenths. Okay, they multiplied by 10 here to remove that decimal. And there, look what they had to do. They had to actually, the decimal point was here, even though you, we don't write that in when we just have the number 10. But you have to make one there so you can see that now the decimal point's here. You know, different there. You multiply that by 10 and that by 10. Remember, we were doing those problems at the beginning. 10 times 10, 100. 10 times 8 tenths, 8. That's how we're ending up with that 100 divided by 8. Hoping you're seeing that connection. Now, 8 will go into 10 exactly one time. You put that 8 there. We need to subtract. We get 2 left over. We bring down our 0. 8 goes into 20. Oh, I think it goes in there just two times. And then that gives us 16. We need to subtract. We get 4. This is where I need to get that decimal point up in there. I should have actually already had it up there, but that's okay. I'm still thinking decimal point straight up. And then I can go ahead and add my 0. So I'm going to add my 0 here. Moving that zero down, I can do that. Yes, because I don't have any other digits. Now, eight will go into 45 times really nicely. And there you go, my friends. We end up with, oh, I didn't subtract the last one, but you get the idea. Again, could I check my work? Sure, why not? 12 and 5 tenths times, and then we're going to multiply that by 8. We get our 40, carry the 4, 16. That's 20, 0, carry the 2, 8 plus 10. Woo, 1,000. But actually, you know what? We're multiplying by 10 here, so we're going to divide by 10 here, and then that will give us, there you go, right there. One decimal place means we actually have 100. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Oh my goodness, another math video is just flying by! One after the other, yes siree! Hey, my friends, thank you so much for being a part of this math video. I am so grateful that you come and join me here, even though I really can't ever see you. But you know what? I know you're out there. You're out there somewhere. <laughs> Thanks again, my friends, and like I always say, 